Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Let me ask you something. <laughs> Let me ask you something. It's a personal question. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Wrong. You're terrible. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. North American beef prices are soaring. We're all gonna have to switch to something without meat. Like Taco Bell. <laughs> There's one vegan here tonight. <laughs> one. I will find you. Beef is yet another product affected by supply chain issues. And I'll tell you all about it in tonight's Cargo Unchained High Stakes Edition. Where's the beef? No, seriously, where is it? Here's what's going on, folks. Since the pandemic, demand for meat to cook at home is way up, while meat producers are facing escalating costs in labor, raw materials, and transportation. So, everything. <laughs> it's like a doctor telling you, Mr. Wilson, your test came back, and everything's fine except uh, your skin, your bones, and your organs. <laughs> With demand and cost both up, in the past year, prices for sirloin, boneless chuck roast, and bacon have jumped by about 25%, a phenomenon experts are calling meatflation. <laughs> also the name of my short-lived meat-themed balloon company. <laughs> meatflation is also hitting our friends north of the border. In Canada, a rib roast can set you back $100. That's ridiculous. $100, the only hunk of Canadian meat worth that much is Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Is he the sexiest man alive? <laughs> Stick around to find out. Now, I'm sure some of you are saying, Steve, what's the big deal? Why not just eat something other than meat? Shut up. <laughs> meat is just the rib tip of the iceberg here. Prices are also going up for everything from cooking oil to dairy. And the price of making pizza is soaring, forcing New York pizza shops moved away from the popular $1 slice. It's gotten so bad that Pizza Rat can only afford garlic knots. <laughs> and Americans are not happy about this. In, in the latest USA Today Suffolk University Smucker's Goober Grape Poll, <laughs> Joe Biden's approval rating has fallen to a new low of 38%. 38% ain't so bad, Jack. Why, well, I remember when 38 was the highest percent that existed. <laughs> then old Patty Numberton came out and said, hey, fellas, how about 39? We all said that's the greatest idea since sliced bread. Then we all went, hey, yeah, why don't we start slicing bread? I'm tired of choking on a loaf. <laughs> now I'm serious, folks. The poll, I'm back. The poll <laughs> did have one bit of good news for Biden. He's not Kamala Harris, because the same poll showed her approval rating at 28%. Ooh. A record low for a modern vice president. At 28%, Harris's approval rating was even lower than the 30% in 2008 for Dick Cheney, meaning, meaning to improve her popularity, she should seriously consider shooting someone in the face. <laughs> now, why? Just why are these two so unpopular? Well, in a separate CNN poll, the majority of Americans say Biden isn't paying attention to the nation's most important issues. Yes, he's focused on things Americans don't care about, like infrastructure. He needs to change his slogan from Build Back Better to We Have the Meats. <laughs> well, I, for one, I, for one, and you, you gotta drive. You gotta, you gotta drive. drive. I, for one, care about popularity. That's why this show is laser focused on the one issue Americans really care about. Who is People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive 2021? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please, please, now is not the time. I'm going to reveal that later in the show. Could it be me? <laughs> Stay tuned to find out. Speaking of sexy men and Democrats, there's some news about former president and man giving you health care with his eyes. 
Barack Obama. Obama is in Glasgow for COP26, and in a speech yesterday, he referred to Scotland as the Emerald Isles, which is actually the nickname for Ireland. <laughs> then Obama topped his gaffe with a dollop of oops. Since we're in the Emerald Isles here, let me quote the bard, William Shakespeare. So, he called Scotland Ireland, then quoted an Englishman. <laughs> At least we don't have to check his birth certificate, because that is the most American move ever. <laughs> the Scots, thank you. <laughs> Scots were a little upset. Obama quoted Shakespeare instead of Scotland's bard, Robert Burns. Yes, why didn't he pick Robert Burns? Burns' words just roll off the tongue. Oh, wad some power the gifty gee us to see ourselves as others see us. A wad fray money a blunder free us and foolish notion. <laughs> Pretty sure. Pretty sure that's about climate change. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, stateside, in Congress, they're still focused on who tried to kill everyone in Congress. The January 6th committee is going after the folks who plan to overthrow the election. And I'll tell you all about it in tonight's seditionist Roundup Roundup, Congressional Edition. These neo-Nazis are unstable. <laughs> Thank you, Horsey. The big headline is that the January 6th committee has issued six subpoenas to the ex-president's top campaign associates, a collection of powerful dum-dums who helped orchestrate the latchedest efforts to steal the election, a high-stakes, low-IQ heist on democracy starring pardon criminal Michael Flynn, a.k.a. General Grumpy Pants, pardon criminal Bernie Carrick, the scalp, disgraced lawyer John Eastman, the accessorizer, Campaign manager Bill Stepien, bland master flash. Executive assistant on Angela McCallum, the spare Tiffany. And senior campaign advisor Jason Miller as the honey trap. In the days leading up to January 6th, these Trader Joes were plotting how to throw out the election results, huddled together in a set of rooms and suites in the posh Willard Hotel in downtown Washington, D.C. The room bar tab must have been huge. It's like 20 bucks a pop for those mini Molotov cocktails. <laughs> These guys did anything they could to stop Biden from taking office, including putting pressure on Mike Pence to delay or even block certification of the election. Well, good luck. Pence is a master of withstanding peer pressure. Even in high school, his friends couldn't get him to experiment with ungartered socks. <laughs> no, thank you. Elastic is the devil's reach around. The committee, the committee is especially interested in Michael Flynn because he publicly called for the military to intervene and seize voting machines and encouraged the president to impose martial law to force new elections in battleground states. Sending in the U.S. Army to change the results of election is not something this country does in North America. <laughs> and the threat from these clowns is not over. Here's one of them, John Eastman, the crooked lawyer who should be disbarred before I finish this sentence. Just two weeks ago, spreading the lie that the January 6th insurrection was an inside job. The whole thing was, was a setup. I mean, it was a setup. Uh, John Sullivan, Antifa guy, got paid 60000 bucks by CNN to break in and get video of violence. Yes, CNN organized the insurrection. Everyone remembers when the Senate chamber was presided over by the Wolf Shaman. <laughs> Anderson, I'm breaking in now. Stop the steal. <laughs> then this afternoon, the January 6th committee issued 10 more subpoenas. One more, and they get a free sub. <laughs> Pina, because there's going to be way more subpoenas after this. <laughs> so, who's up in the fresh batch? Well, does the name Kenneth Klukowski mean anything to you? Because I have no idea who that is. I think he's one of the monsters from Monsters, Inc. I do recognize one person being summoned to Capitol Hill, senior advisor Stephen Miller. Which is surprising. I thought he could only be summoned by sacrificing a goat. 
We got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Quentin Tarantino, but when we come back, I will reveal people's sexiest man alive. Stick around.